and then we'll see how much more performance and torque we have when the day is over. This is what you call where the magic happens. Right, this is where the magic begins. Welcome back to the third episode. And today, it's about more power. For the Supra, not for me. We're at Siemens Motorsport today, and we're going to look at the engine. So we're going to breathe a bit more life into the Supra. You want to get more performance? Also, Malta from CFD is coming. We still have intercooling, oil cooling, and the intake system is being changed. So again, we have a lot to do today. We've already arrived. We're going to turn right here onto the lot. There are already some nice cars there, and now, of course, we're going to add another one. And yeah, then. And Franz is already there. Hi there, Franz. A very good morning to you. Everything okay? Already woken up? Of course, I've been up for hours. Been waiting for you. Very good. Now I had to look for your nice place first. Wonderful. Should we get started? We're going to do it? Okay, let's go. Yo, up Nice. Nico, this is my little world here, my workshop. We mainly do performance upgrades and larger conversions. There's a lot of Mercedes AMG, for example. Here, yeah, okay. C63 T model, 850 horsepower. Cool. C63 Cabrio, 850 horsepower. Good, the M3 compressor, only 620 horsepower. <laughs> okay. And here's my E92 Drifter. Very nice. 3 Series BMW basis, 1200 kilograms, 600 horsepower, and the car wrapping should look familiar. Yeah, that's what you guys chose. That's what's going to be our Supra. And more or less, France has already implemented. Yeah, a little bit. Very much so. It looks really beautiful. I think so too. Looks very good. Another estate car with 850 horsepower. And now let's have a look at our performance test bench. It's right here. Okay. We'll put the Supra on it to see how much performance it has with the existing modifications. And then, when we're done today with all the rest that we're going to install in the software, we'll take another measurement and see how we'll end the day. That much more performance. Sounds good. We're going to do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. I've got the car strapped down and now we're going to accelerate the car in fifth gear. That's the next one to one gear ratio from low revs up to the rev limit. Then we'll let it coast and then we'll have a result. That's actually the same thing we did in the case of the lightweight performance. But you still always do a new input measurement, right? Exactly, the comparison always has to take place in the same test bench. Furthermore, the control unit adapts a bit in driving and the car is driven. There's the cooling and the fan and before there was 98 octane in it, now we've got 102. Okay, good luck then. It might be loud. Alright Nico, now we have a baseline on our test bench, 358 horsepower, 511 newton meters, 18 horsepower, more than standard because there's already the exhaust system underneath. Almost identical to what you measured at lightweight, right? Exactly, this makes sense. However, you mentioned the petrol, which is different, but today it's much warmer than it was at lightweight, so it roughly cancels out. Exactly, we've measured approximately 5 horsepower less, but that's okay, absolutely identical. Now we're going to install intercoolers, an air intake system, and the oil cooler for the transmission. That's irrelevant for us here now, but it will be important for you later on on the track so that the gearbox doesn't overheat. The intercooler and intake system will be important for us now and for you later on. And then I'll remove the controller and write it new on the table. I'll put my map on it, my programming, my tuning, so to speak. And then we'll see how much performance and torque we get out of it when the day is over. Now we're getting serious about the conversion of our Toyota Supra. The first parts are already here, and Malta is standing right next to me. Nice to be here. I'm Malta from CFD in Dortmund, and we specialize in the sale of tuning accessories. There are two radiators in front of us. One is the original, and the other is the tuning radiator you brought with you. Exactly. We've invested in a total of five radiators in the car from the American company CSF. We'll fit an add-on transmission radiator, an add-on water radiator, and the main issue is indirect charge air. And with all the radiators, it's about bringing the temperature down. Because just like we've already learned today on our test bench, when it's such a warm day, we lose performance the higher the temperature is. 
and with the bigger radiators, we try to bring the temperature down permanently. That's exactly how it is. On the one hand, it's about increasing performance through lower air intake temperatures, but even more, it's about more continuous running time in order to keep the system cool for longer in sports use. This radiator is not only twice as thick as the other one, there's also a lot going on inside. That's right, the radiator is not only characterized by the increased volume, but the fins and the so-called bi-tube technology in the radiator ensure that it's more than twice as efficient as the other one. Here we have the two intake systems, the original, and in addition, the accessory intake from Eventuri. There are two special features here, one is how the noise develops, and the other is the performance enhancing measure. Now here we have the original part, which is already very clunky, but apart from that, I think this carbon fiber is simply very beautiful, but obviously it's not just beautiful. Exactly, carbon is not just a beautiful material, it also has a special advantage. The heat coefficient is better, and that has the advantage that here, the air that is sucked in doesn't additionally heat up to the housing, which, once again, increases performance. And something that you just mentioned, something which is quite interesting, we can generate a nicer sound through the intake. Exactly. The original intake has several devices here that are supposed to virtually eliminate the intake noise. And with the accessory intake, it's virtually released again which means you can hear and enjoy the supercharger with its mechanics again. Not only more performance, but also something for the ears. Exactly. Current interim status. All the radiators are installed, the intake system with the air filter is installed, and we've added a carbon cover on top. The next step is the software. Then there's the chip tuning, and that's why we're now removing the controller. Okay, Franz, that's the controller, that's clear. What are you going to do with it now? Exactly, it's the brain of the vehicle, so to speak, controls the engine and other things. I'll now wire up the controller on the table and upload it in bench mode. I'll download the original data from the manufacturer that's on this control unit, open it up with my editing program, WinOLS is what it's called, and then edit the characteristics that need to be edited. That means ignition, boost, pressure, lambda, and so on. When I'm done with that, I'll run my software on the engine controller, take it, and reinstall it. Okay, then we'll see each other when we take the measurement. Right. So we've done the measurement, yeah. I think the result is quite respectable, 462.9 horsepower. <laughs> the 0 0.9 is very important. It's definitely important. 626.4 newton meters. That tells us we have 104 horsepower and 115 newton meter more torque. That's great. I don't think you can do any more with a serial turbocharger. You can see quite clearly where the original flattens out a bit at 5500 RPM. It had a plateau and we managed to increase the performance. That looks good. The diagram is good. The logs I looked at are clean. Ignition, boost pressure, lambda. And now the next step for me is to test drive the car and see how it runs on the road. And that's what we'll do now. Okay, and we'll take a look at the test drive in the next episode, so stay tuned. We'll also discuss the current status of the Supra and of course we'll give you a preview of what's to come. But for now, let's go for a drive. That's right. And then you accelerate up to, I'd say, from 90 to 210 kilometers per hour according to the speedometer. Okay, fourth gear, 140, 160, 180.